Well, the history of our service here in, in Curry Mallet is about five years ago we joined something called the Parish Path Liaison Officer Scheme, which gives um, uh, parishes an opportunity to appoint somebody who liaises with the rights of way team to report problems with the rights of way network and that sort of thing. We appreciate that the, the rights of way team do a, a fantastic job, but they, there is a huge rights of way network in Somerset and they, they only have a relatively small budget. Um, and what it means for us is that we can do add value to what they were doing in the past. So for example, there was only two or three paths that used to get cut um, in, the, in the parish um, once or twice a year. And what we do now is we go out every month, our volunteers, uh, and it means that we can cut as many paths as we want that we see fit that needs to be um, cut uh, in, the, in the parish. So members of the local community have come back to us and said things like, um, well, it's OK that those paths are being cut, but what about the others that lead down to the school or down to the church or to the shop? So it does mean that we can do more than, than, the, um, than the rights of way team were able to afford in the past. We have four volunteers uh, in total um, and uh, as I say they go out uh, throughout the summer um, doing uh, strimming works uh, and also for the rest of the year too um, they go out doing things like lopping back vegetation, taking out secateurs and cutting around uh, gates and stiles uh, and that sort of thing. And with the strimming, um, I mean one of the difficulties is, is that parish councils have powers to carry out certain maintenance works and rights of way however there's always that issue regarding training uh, and insurance and health and safety and that sort of thing and the rights of way team have been absolutely fantastic because um, they um, cover our insurance for us when our volunteers are out working they've provided us with all the equipment that we need um, they've done the training and also the, um, the risk assessment and the health and safety side of things too well when we heard that the council were uh, reducing funding uh, we were just disappointed um, but we understand the, the, the reasons um, behind it uh, and it, that we do appreciate that it means that we as a parish council and as local volunteers are going to have to take on more um, to um, make up for the fact that, that some services are, are being cut back. And again, we're very lucky here in, in, in Curry Mallet is in that we have a very forward-thinking and proactive parish council who are very keen to look at and investigate all the options that were available to us. Uh, and that's when we start going back to, for example, the district and the county council uh, to the relevant services and say to them, well, OK, we understand that this is happening, but is there any way that we can work together um, to try and make sure that some form of service is still provided within the village. The lessons that we've learned is that the, the rights of way team did a fantastic um, job before um, and I don't think it's, I think it's fair to say that we don't necessarily appreciate the amount of work that they, they, that they actually do um, in the background um, and what we've learned is that you can't necessarily please all the people all of the time but we very much try our best and what we've found is that the best way around that is by being very open about what we're trying to achieve uh, and communicating with people and letting people um, knowing what we do. So we always make sure that there's things going in our local newsletter um, and that there's articles with the parish council and that sort of thing too. If others were thinking of joining the scheme, um, I would say go for it really, to be honest. Um, and I say that because, that, as I say, people are sometimes quite nervous because they are worried about the bureaucracy side of things, things like insurance, health and safety, training, equipment. Um, but the, uh, the Rights of Way team and the, and the County Council have helped us with all that side of things and that has enabled us then to go out and actually carry out the works uh, on the ground. So don't be scared of it, um, go out and do it. We're an isolated village. We've got hardly any transport at nights for the young people to get in and out of the village. And they need somewhere to go that's safe and they can enjoy themselves and be themselves. When we heard the council was stopping the provision for the youth club, we were ups I was absolutely devastated because this club has been going a long time. We needed space for the young people. The service we provide now is very similar to the service we that was supplied by Somerset County Council. Um, we're trying to get more involvement from the people of the village, trying to get more volunteers, and trying to be more self-efficient. We talked to the, to the youth service and they were very helpful. They helped us 
in all sorts of ways and so that any help we needed they would give us and they were true they were true to what they said they they did help us out it was hard work um we had transition money um that was set up for us to have and um they and once we got through the fog of people um that had lost their jobs and we were finding new people to work with <clears throat> We gradually got to know the people and they got to know us and um, it was much easier than we could, you know, we could talk to them. By working together, we've got a small, very small management committee um, and we all work together. We find out who we had to talk to. As I say, Somerset Youth Service and Somerset County were, were helpful. Everybody we managed to speak to were very helpful. What we've got now is a, what they call a lease at will. Um, we're hoping in the, in the next few months hopefully we're going to get the assets the buildings transferred to us as a um so that we've got our own that it's the buildings would be ours we, we we run things like electricity gas and um, all the services we pay for those now but um in the future we're hoping that the community they'll be used as community buildings and we're going to let them out to um members of the community if they want them for you know children's parties and things my advice to others who, who may be in the same position would be to look at all the alternatives, look at different funding streams, look at different providers, um, see what you've got in your own community, see if there's any business partners that can help you. Um, there is help out there, there is a silver lining. The main thing is, is just having that spirit to keep it all ticking over to um, involve as many people as possible, you know, adults of the village, um, businesses in the village, just to bring it all together. It's very hard work, but if you're committed and you speak to people and ask people and ask, definitely if Somerset say they'll give you a, a helping hand, ask for it. Don't just leave it, don't try and do it yourself. It's damned hard work, but it, you do get there in the end. This is Curry Mallet. Uh, it's in the middle of the Isle Valley, where seven miles equidistant from Taunton, Langport and Ilminster. So we're a bit out in the sticks here. And when you get winter weather, it can be really quite tricky getting in and out of the village. The service that, 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 that's being undertaken uh, is providing grit uh, to keep these local lanes uh, clear uh, of ice. Uh, there's about a mile and a quarter between here and the nearest main road. Uh, there's a third of a mile from here into the village shop. So to try and keep that entire distance gritted so that people can get out and get into the village again. One of the things that's been purchased uh, is a new grit bin, uh, which we now have installed uh, and, and that will make uh, this service of keeping the local lanes e uh, clear in winter times uh, a great deal easier. Firstly the availability of grit because to buy it commercially is quite expensive. Uh, as you may know uh, county highways provide a service of 10 20 kilo bags to each parish uh, and that's very helpful to have. More especially now because of the cutbacks in all forms of service uh, be it central government or local authority or public agencies generally, uh, I think there's a much greater need for communities to uh, get stuck in and do things for themselves. Local communities should get to know the officers in the local authorities uh, who serve them because there is a tremendous uh, uh, fount of goodwill from the local authorities who even in straightened circumstances will bend over backwards to see what they can do to help people uh, who are keen to help themselves. So that would be my, my first recommendation. Uh, not everything arrives overnight. You need a fair amount of graft and persistence uh, to do these things. Uh, you also need 
what I call a critical mass of people who are prepared to get stuck in. Uh, it's very easy to get what some people call resource fatigue if it's a lone voice out there trying to do everything uh, on your own you can quickly get you know, fairly brassed off but if there are a group of you uh, then you feed off each other uh, and there's a real sort of esprit de corps generated and, and that's good uh, for the individuals and good for the community. Accessible Transport West Somerset, that's Act West, um, was started in 2005 as um, a charitable company, um, largely because uh, it was being run by the Council for Voluntary Services, but Somerset County Council felt that it ought to be more professional. Um, we had 400 passengers, we had three rusty vehicles, and the County Council were really keen that these vehicles should be kept in a much more um, safe location rather than on the streets. Um, so all these things had to be sorted out. Gradually over the years we've um, gone from a freezing cold warehouse into um, now this palatial building which we've raised money for. That We raised the entire amount of money that we needed for this and um, West Somerset District have allowed us to lease this piece of land, so things are good. Um, we now do something around about 45,000 passenger journeys every year, which that's individual passenger journeys, um, it's, it's, it's quite a lot really. We run shopper services for the, for, for the residents, we do school runs for, for the children, um, and we also do uh, slinky service which uh, is uh, very popular. That's our dialer ride service which people can book. Uh, they ring in and they register with us and then they can book it to use for, for, for any reason but mostly for hospital appointments, doctor's appointments, even getting the hair done. Uh, the main thing is that we get our local people out, out and about in the community. Um, we, also, uh, we also use our own buses to take uh, care, care homes, residential homes out on trips for the day. Um, so we just about cover every, every age group and, it, and every reason. We have no funding, that's probably our biggest challenge. Uh, that, that's all gone now, it's, it's, it's the same for everybody I guess, but um, the thing that's happened lately with the budget cuts is county have had to cut some of the rural bus routes, the service routes. We're trying to help that, we're, we're working and talking with county at the moment about helping them to uh, get some of those uh, locals in the villages up on Exmoor and, and locally and uh, we're trying to, to use our buses and even some of their buses where they've got spare capacity to, um, to, to fill in for those routes that are, that are disappearing now. Um, a lot of those areas now will have no bus services at all. Um, where we can help is that we'll, we'll run hopefully dialer ride services so people can book it, therefore the, the vehicles won't go out there unnecessarily. Uh, and also we'll use our car scheme which uh, uh, we've set up in September. Uh, that now can help people, not only to get to local appointments, but also we can take people to, to Musgrove, to Bristol, to Exeter, to all the hospitals that we weren't able to do before. In the car scheme, it's all volunteers. Um, they use their own vehicles. Um, we, uh, we will get some uh, money from the users to help pay for their expenses, and that's all. We have an escort, travelling escort, to help people get on the bus, carry the shopping when they get home. So. That's in really many cases it's actually keeping people in their own homes where they might otherwise um, lose their independence and have to go into residential, into residential care. care yeah. It's a big difference and maybe mm. in, for some it's the only time that they ever get out of their house. Mm. So it's reducing depression, it's helping their health. My advice to people who, uh, who are facing problems at the moment in their communities uh, like, like we are with uh, some of the bus services being cut is to, is to get out and talk to your parish councillors, talk to your district and your, and your county councillors and they'll listen to you, they'll, they'll be happy to talk and they'll be ready to help and uh, you know, it's a case of helping each other.